Gareth Southgate has now picked his final 26-man squad for the upcoming Euros. So in today's video, we're going to be going through each and every England player that's been picked in that 26-man squad and rank them on how important I think they're going to be for the upcoming Euros in Germany. But before we get to that, if you guys are new here, make sure to hit subscribe, hit like and also turn on notifications. And if you do want to appear in a future video like the hot takes videos, the rule changes videos, anything like that, then head over to my TikTok, LLGaming63, drop it a follow, turn on notifications, because that is where I always ask you guys for your opinions, hot takes, you know the drill. Head over to the TikTok if you want to appear in a video, because we upload every single day here, football content every single day, and most of it involves your guys' opinions, takes, everything like that. So if you do want to appear in a future one, you know what you got to do, TikTok, LLGaming63. But... Without wasting any more time, let's get straight into this massive tier list. And as you can see here, we have the tier list. Going from bottom to top, we have Won't Touch Grass, which is quite self-explanatory. I don't think they'll make a single minute in the entire tournament, no matter how many games we play. Then we have few minutes, and those are for players that will maybe come on for 5-10 minutes when we're comfy, 2-3-0 up in a game. And then we have squad players, someone that will be in the squad's like, we'll come off the bench most games, 20 minutes here or there. An important impact player. Then we have important, and that is a starter who is just going to be, yeah, you, you want them on the starting 11, guaranteed. But they're not quite the top tier, which is Starman. And this is saved for maybe a few players who are really going to carry England if they go all the way and win the entire thing. It will be because of the players in Starman. Obviously, this is all in my opinion. But let's get started. We've got the three goalkeepers now. The first two are quite easy. Won't touch grass for uh, Henderson and won't touch grass for Ramsell. Quite easy. Unless Pickford gets injured, these players aren't going to get on the pitch at all. You don't change your keepers in a big tournament like this. So, them two easy, won't touch grass. But, Jordan Pickford, I'm going to put an important. He was absolutely fantastic for Everton this season. So, could be so important for us. I was even considering putting him in Starman. He could really be that good. We know how good he is for England, but usually he doesn't always have the best season for Everton. This is potentially the best season he's ever had at Everton going into an international tournament. So, Pickford could really be our saviour in some massive, massive games. But I think important is fair. Hopefully, we won't be conceding too many chances. So, it might be quite tough for him to become a star man. But fingers crossed, he will be a key player for us. And next, we have Lewis Dunk. Now, this is a difficult one. Because that left-sided centre-back is really, really up for grabs at the minute. And there's four real candidates to take that spot. We have Lewis Dunk and the following three players. So, in my opinion, I don't think Lewis Dunk should be starting this tournament. But he could be of some use off the bench. And for that reason, I'm going to put him as squad player. I'm only putting him as squad player, not few minutes. Because, realistically, he could be Southgate's first choice in at centre-back next to John Stones. We don't really know yet is the issue. Maguire would be the solid one, but obviously Maguire's got an injury now, so we're not really too sure. So Lewis Duncan, squad player, I think it's a good balance. I don't personally want him starting, but if Scalf if Southgate does, sorry, then he could he could be a squad slash important player for us. And next we have Joe Gomez, and this is potentially my tip for starting. So I'm gonna put him into the important. I think him and John Stones next to each other could really offer something really unique that not many defences have. So they're not the biggest partnership, but having Joe Gomez next to John Stones would allow Stones to actually carry the ball forward a lot more. Like we see Maguire do for England, John Stones could almost take up that role. And John Stones has done that so well over the last couple of years for Man City. And you could almost have Gomez as a sweeper, anything in behind, he's got the pace to collect it. I think, I think Joe Gomez and John Stones could be a really solid partnership. And for that reason, I've got Joe Gomez in the important but it is going to be tiered sideways as well so i've got pickford as more important than joe gomez and the next player is esri concert and for me he's going to be our backup right back i think i think we're going to have walker starting and i think we're going to have concert as our backup right back potentially it all depends on injuries on the left hand side but for me concert could be a great player if you want to go to a five back trying to hold on to a win Walker drop into centre back or Conte drop into centre back, Walker stay at wing back or vice versa. They could both do the role very well. So I think Conte could be a really important but squad player. He could be an important squad player, but I don't think he's quite going to get the minutes to be an important player for us. So I think squad player for Dunk and Conte is definitely fair. Let me know what down below though what you think of these first six picks that I have put in. And now we have 
Mark Gahey. Now, this is an interesting one. I'm going to put him below Lewis Dunk, simply because I don't think Southgate is going to pick Mark Gahey. I think he's going to rely on Dunk over him. Hopefully, in my opinion, he picks uh, Joe Gomez, but I think he would sooner pick Lewis Dunk than Mark Gahey. But because of these centre-backs, it's messing up the, uh, the tier a bit. Because I can't put any of them in a few minutes. Because any of them could realistically be our starting centre-back. I really don't know. No one really knows other than Southgate. And I'm not even sure if he does at this point. So I can't put them any below that. But I think that that's why I put the three of them in competition. The squad player and the one I think should start in important. It's, it's quite tough to call at this point. They're all quite equal in terms of likeliness to play. But I think them three and squad player, if any of them play, it's not the end of the world. They're all very decent centre-back still. But now moving over to the left, and this is difficult. It's Luke Shaw. So this all depends on injuries, in my opinion. If he is fit, he, we know where he's going instantly. If he's fit, he's here for me. I think Pickford, because of the amount of game time Shaw's had this season, I don't think I could put him above Pickford. But... If Shaw is fit, we know what Shawberto Carlos does at tournaments for England. And he could be essential to us in this Euros. But the question is, he hasn't played for United in so long. He's barely got many appearances since January. If any at all. I don't think he's got many. So it's it's a tough one to know whether he is going to be starting. But I'm basing this off. The full strength team does include Luke Shaw in my opinion. And if Luke Shaw plays, he is an important, important player to us. And now... Moving over to John Stones. Once again, he's just going to go between Shaw and Gomez. I think this back four so far, obviously there's one more player to join it. I think this team will be very, very good for us. That back three with Pickford behind them and one more player to join them. I think that's a very solid team. Keeper and left back are more important for us. Pickford and Shaw always perform so well for us. And I'm hoping Stones and Gomez will just be solid. That's all we require from a from our back two and Stones will hopefully have a bit more freedom in this tournament because he's not next to Maguire to be the ball carrier and I think that could work quite well we know what Stones does for Man City even though he's fallen out, he's fallen out of favour recently a bit I think in England he will be amazing this tournament but it all depends on who he's next to and everything like that and how much freedom he's given next we have Kieran Trippier and for me he's going at the top of squad player if it lets me put him in there we go top of squad player so I think Trippier starts at left back if Shaw isn't fully fit which is a very good possibility and if not if Shaw starts the first second game whatever it's very likely to be honest that he picks up a little knock in one of those games and Trippier has to come in for him but if Shaw is fit I think Trippier will be the first player off the bench most games probably for Shaw in at left back obviously he's a great set piece taker he's, he's a massive player in tournaments for us but I think with how strong our right back is and with how strong a fit Luke Shaw is, I don't think there's quite room for him in this team. But I'm predicting to get a lot more minutes than the three next to him simply because if Shaw manages to stay fit, he's probably only going to be playing about 70 minutes every game and Trippier will definitely, definitely be playing the other 20. Now, the last listed defender in the squad is Carl Walker and he is going at the top of important so far there's more players still to come don't you worry but Carl Walker is so important for us and maybe now even more than ever with players like Mbappe that we might have to face in this tournament players like Sane Carl Walker could really be the difference maker his speed in behind covering saves England so many times and we can't look beyond that his just his speed alone if you just look at it as a one stat that speed saves England a good few goals every tournament and in a tournament like this, a few goals could be the difference between winning and getting knocked out. So for that reason, Carl Walker has to go at the top of important. And that's ignoring his actual technical ability. He, a lot of the time he's quite overlooked of actually carrying the ball forward and creating stuff. He's not the best crosser, but he is good at making overlapping runs and also just having link-up play. He plays in a Pep system and has done for many years now. He can't be bad on the ball because Pep would not have that. So Carl Walker is our most important player that we've looked at so far. So, they are the three goalkeepers and the defenders done. What would you change? Make sure to let me down below. Have I messed one up massively? Make sure to let me know. I'm sure the Newcastle fans will hope Trippier was a bit higher. Let me know, though. Have I missed someone in Starman already? Was Walker, Pickford, any of them in Starman? Now, moving on to the midfield. And obviously, the first one is kind of a defender. 
kind of a midfielder. It's an interesting one. We have Trent Alexander-Arnold. The question is, where is he going to play for England? No one really knows. The thing is, I don't think he's going to play if he's going in at right back. But because he's been listed as a midfielder, I think there's a very good chance that he does play. But he's probably not my first choice. And for that reason, I'm putting him next to... Oh, I don't know where to put him. It's either high squad or low important. Just because I'm really not sure how many minutes he's going to be getting. But I'm going to put him... Yeah, I'm going to put him second in line in the squad player. Simply because I'm not sure how much uh, Southgate is going to trust him. But if he does, then he could easily be an important player for us. No one other than probably Kane has quite the level of passing that he does. Uh, for that reason, actually, I'm going to move it up to important. I think, I've now thought about it, I think Southgate honestly might put a lot of trust in Arnold. And I think, honestly, he if he plays, he there's no reason he can't be one of, one of our most important players in the team. He could have more of an influence than Stones and Gomez. And for that reason, he's going in the middle of the pack of important. Because now I think about it more. The more I think about the friendly we've just seen, I think Southgate honestly might trust Arnold and Rice as a double pivot over the Mainu Gallagher that we're about to look at now. But Arnold, if he plays, that range of passing is something no one else in that midfield has. Obviously, Rice, Bellingham, they can pass. But Arnold's passing is different level. If you saw that pass in the friendly, you know what I'm on about. So I think middle of the pack of important is perfect for Arnold. And now we have Kobe Mainu. This is an interesting one because this is maybe Arnold's toughest competition for that second midfielder spot. We don't really know with Southgate. It could be Gallagher. It could be Mainu. It could be Arnold. But I would say Mainu is the best legit competition for that slot next to Rice. And I'm going to put him... So I would quite like to see Mainu start but I don't think he is going to. And for that reason, I'm going to have to shove him just below Kieran Trippier, I think. I think Mainu, whoever starts out of Mainu and Arnold, will probably be playing about 70 minutes and the other one will get subbed on. I think that's the most likely outcome here. I think it'd be a shame not to see Mainu in this tournament. He's been so good and consistent for Man United, but also good and consistent in the one and a half games he's played for England so far. So it's a real shame not to include him in the team, not give him a good amount of minutes. So I think the more likely outcome is probably Arnold in midfield and sub on Mainu, but it could be vice versa. So high squad player for Mainu and mid important player for Arnold. I think it's a good little balance. And now we have Conor Gallagher and this is where the first hot take comes. I know Gareth Southgate loves him, but this is my list and I'm doing him few minutes. I don't really want to see Conor Gallagher on the pitch Unless there's about five minutes left in a game. We're holding on for a win. And we need someone just to do the dirty work. Because that ain't really what you're going to get with Mainu. Mainu, if he gets on the ball, he's not losing it. But he's not, he's not sprinting everywhere to win that ball back. Whereas Conor Gallagher, he will give you that. So I think Gallagher could be a, could be a good squad player. But I don't want to see him play that often. So I've got to have him in a few minutes. I think there's very few circumstances where Conor Gallagher is the right option off the bench. But obviously, I'm saying this. We know Southgate, Conor Gallagher may be the starting midfielder for us and it wouldn't even be that much of a shock. But I don't think he's quite up to the level of the other two to be starting over them. But I could see him coming on last five minutes, like I said, in a big game just to run around, be a bit of a nuisance. But he won't. I don't think he'll ever play as a two midfielder. I think we would take off an attacker and push him up a bit to do the running, to be honest. But I wouldn't mind if I saw him for a few minutes, but I don't want to see him for much more than that. And now we have Cole Palmer. And again, it completely depends on what Southgate does. Because if Southgate drops um, if Southgate drops Bellingham into midfield with Rice, we might see Palmer start. But in reality, I think we're seeing Palmer probably as a low-end squad player. I don't think he's going to get too many minutes. I think he will be the Saka replacement, if I'm being honest. I think when after about 80 minutes, when 75, 80 minutes, when Saka seems to have done everything he can, I think that might be when we then see Palmer get onto the pitch. It would be good to see Palmer a bit more though because he does have that good technical ability, a bit more like Arnold. Obviously nowhere near the level of Arnold in terms of passing, but in comparison to Saka, he's much more technical on the ball in passing and creating chances. And sometimes in the last 10, 15 minutes of games, that's exactly what you need. So I think he will come on to the pitch for Saka or even in the 10 role, but I don't think we're going to be seeing him that often which is a bit sad to see but we're very very deep in the attack so I think a squad player but the towards the low end is probably the right way to do it but I'll move him up one I'll move him above 
Mark Gahey just because I don't think he's really in contention at the minute. And now we have Adam Waterman. Sadly, he's going to have to go. He can go to the top of Won't Touch Grass, but I honestly don't see him playing any minutes. And that's simply because I don't see him taking Rice off in really any games. And if he does, I realistically see it for Maynou or Gallagher or Arnold, whoever hasn't started. But then again, Adam Wharton, if he does come on, I'm not going to be mad at all. If we're 2-3-0 up and there's 5 minutes, 10 minutes left, give Rice a rest. Give Adam Wharton a big last 10 minutes in a massive tournament. Why not? He could be the future of England, so why not give him some minutes early doors? It's worth it. I'm tempted to move him up to a few minutes, but... I sadly just don't see it happening with him. I don't know why, but something's telling me Adam Wharton is going to be one of the players that doesn't really get on the pitch. I hope I'm wrong. So if you are here watching it as a Palace fan, I hope I'm wrong with this one. But I'm trying to mix it between what I think and what Southgate thinks. So I think won't touch grass is sadly the realistic possibility for Adam Wharton. And now we have, in my opinion, our first star man. Declan Rice, I think he is going to be our best midfielder. I know that's a bold take with who's still yet to come, but I think Rice is going to be so important for us. The amount of times he's going to win that ball and carry it forward could be an absolute game changer. He's a next level midfielder, and I think we're going to see it in this tournament. He's been so good for Arsenal, so good for West Ham, so good for England in the past. And I think we might see a next level of Rice in an England shirt this tournament. I think he's going to win the ball back so much, play some crucial passes, lead to some goals. He might even bag a few himself. We've seen his shooting from distance. He can definitely do it. So I think Rice is so far our first star man. What do you think? Is that controversial? I think Rice could be one of our three, four most important players in the entire tournament. Make sure to let me know what you think. Now moving on, we have the Newcastle winger, Anthony Gordon, a good involvement in the squad, obviously, kind of replacing Rashford, I would say, because obviously Gordon has massively outperformed Rashford this season, so it makes sense for him to be involved. When you look at the squad, the left-hand side is probably the weakest in terms of depth. We only really have Foden, if Foden's going to start out there, and after that, I think Gordon could be the next person on, and for that reason, I think he's going to sit there just with Maynou in the squad player. I think him and Maynou might get similar minutes and hear me out because I think when we make changes to the front three we might see Foden move over, Bellingham drop in and that left hand side will suddenly free up and that's when Anthony Gordon comes in. I think they're both going to be used for about 20-25 minutes a game maybe to offer something a bit different to maybe confuse the other team. Anthony Gordon's a completely different winger to Phil Foden so it would be good to like make the right back a bit uncomfortable facing Foden all game but then he's got to face Gordon a more direct winger. I think Gordon could be really important for us but I can't put him in important because I don't really think he's going to be starting games for us. And next we have Bakayo Saka. You would definitely expect him to be starting this tournament. But how important do I think he's going to be? And the answer is, I think he's going to be important. But not, not crazy. But I don't think he's going to be star man. I don't think he's going to be a star man. I think he's going to be a very, very solid player for us. Obviously, look at the company he's with here. John Stones, Arnold if he starts, remember. Luke Shaw, Joe Gomez if he starts. Like, I think that's fair company for Saka. I don't think he's going to light the world on fire at this tournament. But I think he could produce a couple of goals, get a couple of assists, be a real solid 7, 8 out of 10 every single game for us. And you need those players. So almost he's more important because you need those players in a Euro winning squad. You need the stars, but you also need the players that are guaranteeing you good performances. And I think that's what we might be getting from Saka this tournament. Well, fingers crossed that is what we're getting because that would be really, really helpful. If he's just a utility player who does the dirty work, he gets involved everywhere, gets on the ball, does the simple stuff well, and it allows that to then facilitate for the better players like Foden maybe and players like Kane. You need someone like Saka in this team. I think he could have an important role as long as he performs. Like he does for Arsenal. Solid 7 or 8 out of 10 most weeks. And that's what we need in this tournament, definitely. Next is Ivan Toni. And I'm instantly shoving him a few minutes. I don't think he's going to be our second choice striker. And I don't know if he should be. He didn't have the great second half of the season when another striker on this list did. Obviously not. Not the big man. But someone else had a good season. Whereas Tony did... Didn't look quite himself coming back from the ban. But, I mean, if he does play, you know what you're getting with Tony. He is going to put in a solid 
performance. He does offer us something a little bit different as well to the other options, but I don't think he's going to be in Southgate's plans. Before the ban, it seemed like Southgate was reluctant to give him game time. So after it, when he hasn't performed as well, he's kind of got a reason to now. So I don't really expect um, Ivan Tony to be getting too many minutes this tournament. But it would be a nice surprise if he was to. And now, Phil Foden, I'm having as Starman. But it's whether he's above or below Declan Rice. And for how good his season was just in the Prem, I mean, I've got up him above him. He just won PFA Player of the Year for the Premier League. Obviously, winning the league. Obviously, season four won the treble. I think he could be so important for England. I think he could be our prime creator in that front three slash four. I think he could be absolutely excellent for us. And as it stands, I think it's fair enough as well. He is listed as our most important player in the entire squad with only five players to go. And I think that is very well deserved. And next we have Iz Eze. Sorry, I was about to say Izzy. Eberiche Eze. And again, I don't think he's going to be playing often. I'm going to have to put him in a few minutes. I think he could come on in the odd game. Maybe if we're comfortable, I think he could be one of those players that gets five minutes if we're comfy in a game. Because I really like Eze as well. I really, really like him at Crystal Palace. I think he's destined for a big move. But I don't think he's quite breaking in to that England first first 11 or then the three, four subs, really. I think we have too much depth in the position he's looking to be coming in at. So for that reason, it's sad to say, but I don't think he's massively going to be getting involved. And the exact same goes to Jared Bowen. He's just had an unbelievable season. But he's going to go a bit higher, but he's just had an unbelievable season. But again, with the amount of depth, there's two players. Well, there's definitely one player in Cole Palmer that's outperformed him this season. And I think Saka's a guarantee to be starting. So there's two players I think are going to be above him in the pecking order for that right wing spot. But then again, Palmer might move in centrally, give Bowen a chance. But I don't really see it happening. I don't think Bowen's getting too many minutes whatsoever. It would be good to see him get some minutes, but I don't really think it's happening. And third to last, we have Jude Bellingham, who is going to be obviously a star man. But I'm going to have him towards the end. I don't think he's going to carry us quite like Phil Foden could. But I mean, I'm saying this like, oh, uh, Bellingham's going to massively underperform. He's still in star man. Now, I think there's just a few levels in Starman. I don't think Bellingham is quite going to be the level of Foden, but I'd more than happily be proved wrong. I'm still putting Bellingham in the Starman. It's not like I'm putting him in Porton or anything. He's still one of our top three, four players in the entire tournament either way. But I think he may just be slightly outperformed by the likes of Foden. There is no shame in that whatsoever because we're looking at one of the best players in the world in both of these players, to be fair. All three of these are some of the best players in the entire world in their respective positions. So, I think they are so far the three star men. But then we have the man at the top, and it's Harry Kane. He does have to go as the main star man. I know people question him in an England shirt. Obviously, he's moved to Bayern, not managed to win a trophy there. But you can't ignore the amount of goals he's scoring. And when you watch him, and so, for example, if you see Haaland, you see the goal count, and that is basically you watching Haaland. You don't need to watch the games. If you see that he's scored, you know what's really happened. Whereas Kane... Half his performance isn't shown in stats. It's when he drops deep to the halfway line, picks up the ball and does a 60-yard diag pass, makes it look like Scholes or Arnold is doing it. That doesn't show up in the stats. You can't see how good of a player is without watching him. But he does that with the goals. He's just come off an unbelievable season with Bayern. I think this could be his tournament to carry us all the way to lifting the entire trophy and I mean, I hope so. I think it's a matter of time for Kane does it. He's only got a few more tournaments left at his peak. And I think this could be the one where he does it. Look at the company he's got around him. Foden, Bellingham are both involved in most attacking plays for us. And now he's got them to play alongside. This could get really, really good for Kane. If he drops deep and starts playing some passes out to Foden, this could get absolutely disgusting and impossible to defend at certain points. So I think those are the locked in for Starman. And we have one more player left, and it's Ollie Watkins. And for me, he's no more than a squad player. And he's probably around here. I don't think Kane's really coming off on the game. But if he does, it will probably be for Watkins. So he will probably come on most games. But it'll be for 5-10 minutes when the game's secured. But if the game's still in doubt, I don't think Harry Kane is coming off the pitch one bit. I don't think you can take Harry Kane off in an important game. And Ollie Watkins just had an absolutely amazing season. But I still don't think it's going to be happening, sadly, for him. It's no shame at all. You're being left out. 
by the best striker in the world. There's nothing you can really do at this point. Harry Kane is inevitable and he's only going to come off in games that are already secured. But it could be a good opportunity for Watkins to get a goal or two in the last 10-15 minutes of games when we're already 2-3 up. But there it is, the full tier list of the 26-man England squad. If you have made it this far, let me know down below, what would you change? Make one yourself and send it to me on TikTok, on YouTube, anything like that. Leave it in the comments if you want. You can write it out, whatever you fancy doing. I want to know what you guys would change. If you could change one thing from this, what would it be? But like I said, if you haven't made it this far, please drop a like, drop a subscription if you haven't already. Turn on notifications. And until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.